Thanks for the kind invitation. I'm honored to be here today. Um, okay, so I have no conflict of interest or whatsoever. I'm not receiving any funds from uh, any simulation manufacturer. Actually, I think I'm going to spoil their business here a little bit, so sorry about that. If it works. Okay, so I come from a country where pre-hospital medicine has a very long history. As you can see, my colleagues 128 years ago already carrying out pre-hospital medicine on the streets. Well, I have to admit they did not do too much simulation training at that time. Now, quite shamefully, 13 years ago, when I entered the pre-hospital arena, I didn't do too much pre-hospital-based simulation training either, but as I went to a pretty good school, I was more than happy to go on the streets and save some lives. A few years later, with many cases behind my back, both hospital and pre-hospital, I had the chance to participate in a uh, pre-hospital-based simulation training with London's Air Ambulance. And it was amazing. I was amazed that after all those years, how much I could still learn, and not just technical, but especially non-technical skills in a week-long course. So it was there and then when my colleagues and I decided that we must take this at home, we must implement simulation training, uh, especially pre-hospital-based simulation training. We must implement. Yeah, so simulate we must, it was no question. The question was though, uh, does the simulation have to be this detailed? <laughs> and the other question was, does it have to be this expensive? And the answers as always, they were found in the literature. So we looked up simulation fidelity and we found that it basically composed of three major elements, equipment fidelity, environmental fidelity, and psychological fidelity. Now the first two are quite straightforward to understand, but let me explain psychological fidelity a little further. It has been called in many names by many authors. My personal favorite one is the, is the fiction contract one. So what is the fiction contract? Well. This is the fiction contract. Two adults over a piece of plastic mannequin, sweating, shaking, having a pulse of 128. This is the fiction contract signed right there. They actually agreed that they will believe that that piece of plastic mannequin is a dying patient they have to help. And this is what we are aiming for. So we went home and we asked our finance director, okay, so how much money can we spend on implementing simulation training? And well, she said not much. So the diagnosis was made, it's gonna be low budget. Low budget usually uh, equals low fidelity, but we were aiming a little higher than that. So we thought that we will just grab those cheap add-ons from each uh, three major bits of simulation fidelity and try to marry this up with the low fidelity technique we could afford. And this was the moment when medium fidelity was born for us. So. In the next few minutes, I would like to share with you seven tips and tricks we came across in the last six years during the evolution of this medium fidelity training that helped us to sign the fiction contract for less. So first tip is uh, grab real stories from real life because we want to train for that. So why not grab these stories? Not just the extreme interesting fancy ones, but the average ones as well. So we use real stories. Second thing. Get credible, well-prepared instructors, because the heart of any medium fidelity training is the instructor itself. They are the ones who basically need to paint the mental picture of anything you cannot buy and put out there. They basically sometimes need to hypnotize the candidates to make them believe uh, that thing is actually there, which is not. Also, we found that um, minimizing our own voice as instructors uh, helps a lot with the lifelike experience. So now we use this cheap application uh, to give the vital signs. And instead of using our own voice as instructors, we use the participants' voices to steer the scenario. Also, some distractions to steer the scenario the way we want it to go. Background noise. Now, this is one thing you can get very cheap. You just go to YouTube and you will find everything. Farm noise, street noise, train station, industrial sounds, eight hours. <laughs> and not just once, but twice, <laughs> three times. YouTube is really funny. There are some funny people out there. 
So 24 hours of industrial sound. <laughs> Clothing. Um, very important not just to dress up your mannequins, but make sure you dress up everyone who is participating in the scenario. It does not have to be expensive. Some high-vis jackets will do, but it should resemble to the role they are playing. So roles have to be clear. Well, unfortunately, we did not have the money to buy the fancy mannequins. So we bought the low-fidelity ones and we pimped them up. Little laminate helps a lot. Um, little coloring helps a lot. Um, ketchup, artificial vomit like we saw in London helps a lot. Um, artificial IV lines made out of straws helps a lot. And uh, even if you want to make an obese patient, bubble wrap helps a lot and some extra weight inside the chest of your low fidelity mannequin. So pimp up your mannequin if you cannot buy the real stuff. Equipment DIY. Now this is one thing we became absolute professionals at. With the laminator, we can basically do anything now. Heating pads, ampules, suction units. Uh, with a little leftover sponge and box paper, syringe driver, uh, thermometer, even an ultrasound. So this, again, uh, improves the lifelike experience a lot. Now, look at this pile of absolute useless junk here. In five minutes out of this, you can make a perfect DIY C-section scenario with all the necessary layers to cut through and the baby inside surrounded by water. And after the baby is born, you can even cannulate the umbilicus because we care both for the mother and the baby, like we heard it before. Also, thoracotomy. Um, go to the butchers, buy some hearts and lungs, and there you go. Uh, put it inside the chest of your low-fidelity mannequin, and there you go. Perfect thoracotomy scenario to practice with. Last but not least, spoiler alert. So, any unreal act can spoil the lifelike experience you built up. Like on this photo, this firefighter is sitting down, pulling on the leg, absolutely unrealistic. This would never happen in real life. So watch out for this, watch out for unreal storyline, watch out for any outside noise is not going well with the scenario, watch out for humor, laughter, watch out for wrong instructor interactions. So don't let these things ruin the lifelike experience you created. And to sum the whole thing up, to sum the whole thing up, I would like to say that that, that. High performance simulation does not have to be expensive, just be creative. And uh, I believe Chuck Norris would say something like medium fidelity rules. So medium fidelity rules. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you. Great talk, Lazo. Um, when you came to visit us in Sydney, you were so articulate, I didn't think you could possibly be an orthopedic surgeon. but. There you go. I'm sorry. There is one smart one among you. That's my dark side. Um, okay. Faisan and Mike, what have we got from Twitter? So people really enjoyed your creative uh, approach to simulation and especially your focus on recreating fidelity. They want to know how was the buy-in process for your entire service? How did you shape the hearts and minds to get people to buy in to uh, simulation training? So it's a process, it's an evolution. So first we started out with really basic things we saw in London. I mean, not basic because they do excellent jobs there, but what we could uh, take from that. And then uh, through the years, so it took us six years to get here. And uh, once again, I would like to say that we are really grateful for those services like London and Sydney Hams that let us learn from them. And uh, we took home a lot from both services. And uh, thank you so much for that. Uh, when you talked about uh, you know keeping things to uh, as far as unreal actions, uh, do you do a brief beforehand and for the new people because you know if you have experienced folk, they know the mindset much like you know with the ATAC people you, you know the mindset. But if you have new people there, they're gonna you know, maybe get the giggles or oh this is crap this isn't real. Uh, how do you do you have a briefing beforehand saying, listen, to make it work, you got to do... You know. Absolutely. So I had an extra slide, which I couldn't put in for time reasons, but it was uh, familiarization. So you definitely have to do a briefing before. You have to familiarize with them, with the equipment, with the whole setup, with the monitor system, with the instructors. That helps all, all extremely a lot. Yeah. Simulation is really fun. Um, 
how do you measure whether it actually has an effect on patient outcomes? So in the last six years, we tried to audit uh, all those KPIs we could. And um, with the simulations, we saw that our unseen times decreased uh, quite a lot, obviously gradually, but quite a lot. Um, SOP compliance, uh, sky high, and uh, probably the best thing we could measure was the uh, intubation success rate, which is in the 99.6%, and especially the Dash 1A, uh, which we're absolutely proud of being higher than 74%. So uh, these indicators all came up with the simulation training process. Brilliant. So basically, your, your service is just bred excellence through simulation. And I think your paper on the RSI is, is a stunning paper to go from that 74% up to 100% essentially. Yeah, so that's showing that. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Laszlo. Thank okay. you so much. Thank you very much.